All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of YouTube. This is Pastor Dow. What I want to do here this morning is I actually want to talk to pastors, assembly heads, um, elders, um, deacons, um, whoever you may be, uh, leaders, teachers in, in ministry. And I think it's something that has probably been in the back of my mind for quite some time. And, and times it slips and then it comes back, but I need to go ahead and talk to you about this um, and, and, and give you tools um, for spiritual warfare and things that go on. Let me give you an example. For instance, um, people come to the straightway truth, the ministry, uh, they listen to me, uh, they hear the truth uh, and they're drawn to that truth. And, and many people will actually move around the areas because they uh, are finding truth that provides rest for their soul. Um, their life starts to improve, their character improves, they start overcoming the wicked one um, only to come to a particular place, no matter, and, and it could be here or it could be anywhere. Uh, people come, they're all excited and they're very excited and, and engaged um, and, and just love the ministry. And then all of a sudden, they get around a few people who outwardly seem like that they are part of the ministry, um, that they really truly care. But then you watch and see that these people are evil. They plant seeds of doubt. You as the people should be able to gauge and understand when someone is not really truly for the ministry or when people are not joined in one mind. The enemy, the way he operates is, is people will begin to slander other people for no reason whatsoever at all. Um, and people will begin to express dislikes about other people and stuff in order to evilly affect you. Now remember, when you're drawn to a ministry, you're drawn because of the truth, not because of the people in the ministry. The people in the ministry... 99.9% .9 of the time are usually no better off um, than places you've, you, you've already come from or left. Um, the ideal of the whole fact of the matter is, is that inside assemblies, commonly called churches, that's where the war is. That's where the fight is. Um, and some people really, truly want to engage in this spiritual warfare. And then there are other people that they just have it in their hearts to be hypocrites and want to stage play. And they don't have any change in their hearts whatsoever at all. As a matter of fact, they believe that the whole world evolves around them and that people should actually formulate their minds and their structure and their belief systems around what they want. And so herein lies uh, the ugly part of being an Israelite or whatever you you be. Um, you have to be careful of the company you keep because everybody just does not have your best interest in mind. If you have a person over here that is disgruntled in a certain area, that doesn't mean that everybody shares that opinion. What they're doing is they're expressing to you their concerns and their dislikes. What you have to do is carefully evaluate that person, their walk, their speech, their conversation, and see if they actually truly fit the bill. Because the way that the enemy works, the way that the devil, the Diablo, the way that he works, the Hasatan, Satan, the way that he works is, is he works through people talking about others behind the back. And they are hoping to plant seeds of doubt. And you have to be careful what you allow to enter into your ears as well as what you allow into your eyes. Some time ago here, just in the ministry in itself, um, I had a bunch of Jezebels, literally spiritual Jezebels that you could see that outwardly they somewhat looked apart the and they seemed like they were kind and nice and stuff. But boy, I tell you, if you could have heard the slander and the conversation um, that they would do to try to discourage others, um, you're going to have people in the ministry that are not there for the edification, the exhortation, the comfort of others. Um, you're going to have people there that pin in their own challenges, um, that they are there to actually make people miserable. I can't tell you how many people who have literally come and gone from the ministry, not because of me, the preacher or the elders himself, but because of the members. 
if I can use those terms and be pure, the way that they behave amongst themselves. Um, because a lot of times people think that we sanction the behavior that takes place behind the scenes when I can assure you that we do not sanction the behavior of a lot of these people behind the scenes. But that's the reason why we're here in the first place, because we're here to actually improve. Uh, we're here to get better. Um, we're here to be sanctified. Um, and what you need to do is be very careful of the company you keep. Be careful of the people who you are listening to. Um, and I tell you, uh, one of the things that the most I hate more than anything is he that saw discord amongst the brother and he hates slander. Pastors, preachers, teachers, and elders, we can't control what others do or do not do when they are not in the assembly. You know, people have lives that they're going to live. But you should up your discernment and realize those who are for the most high and those who are against it, those who are stage playing, those who are hypocrites, those who are basically an idolater, meaning they make an idol of their opinion. I've seen so many people um, come and go over the years because of the so-called perceived testimony of those who seem to be somewhat, and they were there simply to wear out the patience of the saints. All of us have to learn self-control, every single one of us. Uh, all of us, um, we're charged by the most high to be kind, to be tender-hearted, and to be gentle towards each other as Israelites. Some of us are going to do it, and some of us are going to pursue it. Some of us will be sanctified, but others will just simply will not do it because they function after their own book of the law. This is what you need to understand, is that everybody does not have your best interests in mind. Uh, while they may seem like they do, everybody simply just does not have your best. They do not have your best interest in mind. If the enemy is going to operate, he's going to operate behind the scenes. Do not get discouraged of any ministry out there because of the people. Keep your eyes and your vision focused straight ahead on the message and the reason why the Most High brought you to those places. Uh, because if you're looking for a people in the ministry to help represent the pastor, the preacher, the teacher of the ministry in itself, you're, you're going to have a rude awakening. You're going to get discouraged um, when you have your focus and vision and your sight on the wrong thing. Um, there will be people that will start off favorably, uh, only to end up out of favor simply because they thought that when they came that they could actually manipulate, control, dominate, and actually uh, finagle the ministry to suit them. They tried it in one place, it didn't happen, and they tried it in another place, it didn't happen. So, you know, people, they become vagabonds, if you understand what I mean. And it just simply will not happen and cannot happen. So, you know, we can't in any way, shape, fashion, or form uh, control what other people say. We can't control what they do. Uh, we can't control... Um, anything about them whatsoever at all in life. We can't. Um, you are responsible for yourself and yourself alone. You are. Um, and you are responsible for your sanctification, not other people. And it, I, I say it again. Be careful of the company you keep because there are a lot of people, a lot of people in this world, many people have a lot of challenges in their hearts and in their minds. And some people want to get clear and improve. Some people don't. It's easy to look. Pay attention to people's demeanor. Uh, the Bible talks a lot about countenance. That means your, your face and stuff. It, it reads a lot into the heart and the soul of a person. Uh, some you can read very well, discern. Some you can't. Um, but anytime you see someone that is very heavy in spirit or something like that, if you do not have the spirituality to be able to Counsel them wisely, the right way to help them overcome. Then you need to avoid that area uh, at all costs because it's a setup. The enemy is there to wear out and seek to wear out the patient of the saints. All it takes is one accusation, just one. An accusation could be true or it could be false. It doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is it's an accusation because once words are said, your eyes begin and your sight, your vision. It begins to look 
and see things or look for things and see things that are not there because it wants you to look through the lenses of the accuser or the brother. It wants you to look through the lenses of what people are perceiving and then it's looking for your agreement. And once it has your agreement, then your vision is impaired and you become spiritually blind. Um, I wish I could give you the understanding of it, but you be careful um, when you see people murmuring or complaining against other people and it will not go to their brother. You know, Jesus gave us the solution. If you have an alt or fault with your brother, you're supposed to go to him and him alone. If you have an auto fault with your sister, go to him and him alone. If you hear a sister or brother speak evil about another brother, another sister, you're supposed to check that right then and there. And if they continue, you drag that other brother and sister over here that they are talking about and tell them to say the same thing again. I guarantee you'll cut the devil off. You will literally cut the devil off from the midst of you. And those people will be very careful how they speak to you and how they behave around you. As a matter of fact, more likely, you have just made another enemy because you have not allied with the slanderer um, or those who bear false witness, which is a commandment. Um, this is probably one of, that's why it's called the slanderer, um, the deceiver. This is probably one of Satan's greatest tools in order to keep division in the body and the body divided. It's to use false accusation, is to present a lie or somebody who could be offended. They see something some way. They spit into your ears. Your eyesight has never saw that before. Now all of a sudden you start to look for that way. And the slightest little thing you see because your vision has been impaired. Once your vision get impaired, uh, you think that you're seeing clearly when truly you've just been blinded. You have an eye gate. You have an ear gate. And that eye gate and that ear gate, you need to do everything you can with them to guard your heart, your mind, your heart with all diligence. Every, I'm serious. Uh, this is a life and death situation. Some people are spiritually mature. Some are not. The question is, which one are you? Do you really truly know them that labor among you? Do you? Do not accept any false accusation against any leader whatsoever at all. Do not accept any false accusation or an accusation against a brother or sister. If the person that is speaking about this brother or sister, if they cannot say it in front of that brother or sister, or they will not say it in front of that brother or sister, and you check them and challenge them right there, um, then you know who the devil is, who the evil one is, and who the slanderer is. And then you'll know who not to keep company with because everybody simply is just not spiritually mature. So to keep the body together, to keep the body tight, knit, fit close, don't fall after the same example of unbelief that the people fell after in the wilderness. Um, remember, Kor, Dathan, and Abiram, they rose up against Moses and Haran. They rose up against them, and they began to speak evil. Uh, Absalom rose up against David and, and drew away many people. They will always get people, but watch this. When the smoke clears and the dust is settled, and all things, when it starts going back to normal, those very same people will also be the people, watch this, that you will never follow one thing about them as far as an example of being holy and living righteous in this life. I have never in all the 20 something years of preaching and teaching ever seen anyone who were an accuser of the brother or slander or somebody disgruntled or somebody who have issues and troubles and problems and I watch and I do and I look for it. I've never seen anyone to continue on in this walk with the Most High if they had a relationship with him. I've never seen them ever show me all the people that they were affecting, all the people that they were so-called delivering and saving. I've never seen any of those people show us how to live sanctified, how to live holy, and how to have a closer walk with Jesus. I've never seen it. Not one person after all these years. What I do see is everyone that has spit that poison, they all go back. They all turn back. In other words, like the, the word says, they put their hand to the plow and they look back. So therefore, according to the word, they're not fit.
for the kingdom of Yah. None of them ever denied the testimony that they love the king, but in works, they deny him. They are abominable. They're being abominable and disobedient unto every good work. Now they are reprobate. There's nothing about them whatsoever at all that you could see in their life that you would mimic. There's nothing about them at all in their life that you would follow them as they are so-called following Christ because they're not following the Messiah. So you pay attention to people's conversation and their lifestyle and see if they fit the bill because the devil is always on the front seat and always inside the building of the church. Always. Sad part about it is, is once these people in their own self-righteous way leave and tear up the, the assemblies, they continue on for a short period of time and then they fall away completely. Guard your heart, guard your soul. People love putting forth the finger, but very few people can overcome and live and be an example. You heard the truth in that true straight way. Be encouraged, the king coming.